Greetings, friends. Here's the story. In 2020, after participating in the art challenge for Parachutes 20, I decided to create a Coldplay album art booklet. Each album had its own piece in the booklet. Of course, when I made this in 2020, there were eight Coldplay albums. Now there are nine. <laughs> uh, so I'm in the process of creating a new art booklet that I'll put up on my Patreon as a free download, just like the other one, which is still available, by the way, patreon.com slash animation. You can go download that. This new booklet centers solely on Music of the Spheres, with one drawing to represent each song on the album. Therefore, I've split this project into four chunks of three drawings, with a video for each chunk, mostly in the hopes that I actually edit the videos together this time. <laughs> and it's been working. I've been plugging away, and I'm pleased to announce the third round of drawings is complete. So I'll stop wasting your time and start talking about them. This round was higher power people of the pride and infinity sign. And I was looking forward to mm, none of them. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> definitely I knew some of these were gonna pose a challenge. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, really. I started with higher power because that one I felt the most confident in my sketch. <laughs> Although I did need to figure out what to kind of change about it because as I had determined, long ago in the beginning of the project. One thing that was necessary, going to be necessary for all of these drawings is to have the dark background or as as dark as it could be <laughs> um, using the, the darkest color in my palette to, you know, kind of take up the background space and having more of the that starry sky in the drawings because I had tried for my universe with a different color. It just didn't work out well <laughs> and i don't know maybe if i had kept going and included different colors as backgrounds across drawings then it could have felt more cohesive but still that one wasn't working anyway so <laughs> i think this worked out really well to have the dark background also gives me more space to use because i'm just using the same five colors in all of these drawings any other colors that you see coming from that are just a result of like the blend modes and stuff. But it's the same five colors that I use for everything. Keeping <laughs> the dark color as the background allows me to use the rest of the colors everywhere else. And in my thumbnail for higher power, the background was the off-white color. So I was like, gonna need to figure something else out with that but i thought it, it wouldn't be too challenging because it makes enough sense to have the lightning parts be white and the background be dark i had done it differently in the <laughs> thumbnail sketch but it didn't really it wasn't really an obstacle to switch it so another thing that i did with this drawing is i changed the composition of it too i think i was feeling really still unhappy with how the pose in the um which one was it humankind <laughs> drawing how the pose for that character came out still did not like it and i wanted to make sure that this would be something that i could draw well <laughs> And I thought having the straight on look like in the thumbnail just didn't feel right. So I changed the perspective up a bit and I used my thirds <laughs> to compose it. Now, instead of the figure being at the center of the screen and front facing, move them off to the right side facing left so that they are moving forward through a space and gave them more of um like kind of a walking pose i guess <laughs> one thing that i can say for sure like i feel this drawing looks very impressive but the brushes do all the heavy lifting uh you'll see i i took one of the crack brushes and that's how it's like cracked glass or something that's how all of these streaks are <laughs> 
there in the background. The lightning I drew out myself and I'm pretty pleased with how that came out too. Um, I guess I found just the right brush for <laughs> um, kind of give, getting the, the variation in the line width. But all of the other cracks in the background, that's from just a brush. <laughs> and I never apparently want to draw feet, at least not like toes. No, so I just give them all sock feet. It's like when you draw mitten hands, <laughs> but for feet. Um, and because it didn't make sense, I guess I decided why give this person clothes. <laughs> it worked out in the end. I think too, in the thumbnail sketch, I didn't really have a particular background. It was just colored in, but I felt like this needed something so I have the little mountains in. It kind of also ties it in more to humankind. I would say even though I keep drawing the same character, I guess this is really not the same character that's in the suit because if they're in the same location, why would they not be wearing the suit now? Maybe they just all look alike. Well, anyway, <laughs> I think this one turned out for the best and I had some fun with the radial zoom also. Um, blurring uh, out parts of the background to get this like light coming out from behind the character. Overall, Higher Power, I would say, was a success, which was good because that was the one that I was <laughs> feeling confident about going into this round. The other two, not so much. People of the Pride and Infinity Sign, well, I'm feeling a little frazzled right now and <laughs> today I finished the higher power drawing. And I thought maybe I should start one of the other ones. This is the first of the next set of three, draw three drawings. And I thought maybe I should start another one today. But the other two are People of the Pride and Infinity Sign. And I'm feeling very intimidated by both of them. And the problem if I start with People of the Pride is that it has people in it. More human characters. Oh, wait. They don't have to be human. Hmm. Okay, that's an interesting idea. That's an interesting idea. Thanks, me. Now, there's just a lot of characters. <laughs> there's a crowd. Silhouette crowd. But still. And then also, I just, there's a lot of empty space, really, in my thing. I am very cautious about being too repetitive in this whole series because I don't want to just use the same tricks over and over again but I do want that I do want to reuse some of the same tricks over and over again so that everything's cohesive but there's like a balance I think to mm, to find so I guess I'm concerned that if I get started on this I'm not gonna have any ideas for what else to put in the broader spaces and it's just gonna be like oh make it like a um, nebula <laughs> sky oh yeah no i want something interesting to put in there but what infinity sign on the other hand that i really had no good ideas for <laughs> before my sketch is just a bunch of lines i don't know how well you can see that on there but my sketch is just a bunch of lines, and I knew that already, that it's going to need some work. But again, I'm afraid that that work might be too similar <laughs> to what I've done in my other drawings. Um, especially because in the higher power drawing that I just did today, I have the like radial blur zoom effect. <laughs> That is basically exactly what I drew in my sketch for Infinity Sign. So I think for Infinity Sign, it's going to need a real overhaul on the idea, like what happened with my universe. Just to something totally different from the sketch. But I once again don't have any ideas right away. So yeah, I decided to start working on them at the same time and thought that maybe that would help me with something. At least I would be doing something. You know, I thought I feel hesitant. There's some sort of fear holding me back. 
So I thought I need to face that. I need to lean into it. So that's what I did. So I started on both of them at the same time. <laughs> um, I decided to start the rendering phase with infinity sign first once I had those sketches, mostly because I wanted to kind of test if the concept I came up with would work. And then I was feeling pretty pleased with how it was going. So I just continued on with that one. I did try to keep that same like burst idea, having something coming like toward out from the central focus point, but something less abstract than just a bunch of lines. <laughs> I guess I felt too with beautiful. That one is so abstract that it, I was felt it would be challenging, too challenging to do something also abstract, but not repetitive with that. And so I had this idea to use the curtains and the little hanging um, objects that were in the music of the Spheres 2 drawing, just from a different perspective. So this is kind of, in the end, looking down and out into space <laughs> with this figure kind of prancing around in the background. And the trail behind them is the infinity sign. <laughs> uh, while I was working on it, I had originally sketched out for this everything hanging down like it is in the final version. But then I thought, well, the infinity sign drawing is going very well, I think, actually. But the moment I'm starting to reconsider, <laughs> the angle. Let me show you. Because I've drawn this looking down into this area, but I'm thinking now, since I added in this star background, hold on, let me hide that. So here is the drawing as it was before. Okay, then I put my star layer and I drew the nebula and I'm loving the way that it looks. Then it occurred to me that obviously this is pretty inspired by my Music of the Spheres 2 <laughs> drawing here. It's not exactly the same thing. And anyway, this isn't a box, so it would never work this way. But I started thinking about, I mean, I like the way this looks, but I might try to at least sketch out a version where this is like the underside of these hanging things and they're actually hanging up and around over this opening but that does that kind of mess up the the bottom <laughs> of these curtains hmm hmm only time will tell Okay, I did it. Here's the version, first version. And then I did a wonderful sketch <laughs> from a different perspective. So the thing I realized too is they have to hang differently if they're coming from the top. In this one, they're more in the center and over. I think I like this better, especially compositionally. So I'm keeping it. So all of this was for nothing. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Just kidding. It's good to test things out, you know? Because it could have been better that way, but I don't really think so. So I'm gonna keep it this way. Yeah, Yeah. it did not work. <laughs> I tried. I tried to see, uh, you know, push it as far as I could with them hanging in the opposite direction. And it just didn't work because, you know, the kind of logistics of where these objects would be in the composition, they weren't where I wanted them to be, which was more in the center of everything. So I kept it with the perspective looking down. And then finally, so this is something that I always have to figure out with ones like this or with higher power as well, is how much to add in, how many layers to give <laughs> the drawing. Everything, you know, the, the glowing objects, the planet, the figure, these are all very pushed toward the top half of the image and in the bottom especially the bottom right corner it's all just that curtain that's it and i felt it needed a little bit more 
magic to it. In addition to the blue infinity sign trail below the character, I also had this these trailing sparkles um, behind the hand. And so I thought maybe I can find a brush <laughs> that will give me some similar sparkling elements that I can put in the front. And maybe the idea is that they've, well, I guess they would have risen, not fallen, <laughs> but it was mostly just to fill the composition. And I ended up using some snowflake brushes, but just ones that didn't look too much like snowflakes. I think you, if you saw these and thought about snowflakes, you could be like, oh yeah, snowflakes, but they're not like the very, very obvious snowflakes. <laughs> so I think they worked well enough to be just kind of like sparkles. Okay, now back to People of the Pride. So yeah, I did work on this simultaneously. I sketched it out. I think I had a pretty good sketch, but like I said, I decided to work on Infinity Sign before because I wanted to see if the concept worked and then it worked. <laughs> so uh, I went back to People of the Pride after, saving it for last. I, yeah, didn't want to change too much from the thumbnail sketch because I liked it, but I did know that this drawing would need more details and refinement than in the sketch. I drew in the, the crowd silhouette, but gave it a little bit more variety to it. So there's more, I guess, perspective because <laughs> rather than having one blob crowd that is all at the same sort of height, I have these layers of the crowd um, kind of proceeding or receding. <laughs> back toward this like kind of tower that the the main character of this drawing is standing on top of and then i used different um, values to color in that crowd silhouette i knew i always wanted it to be just a silhouette because there was no way that i was going to draw a bunch of characters <laughs> for this one no um but instead of just coloring it all one flat color i added in different values to help again give that illusion of depth happening and i also in the in the sketch i had really big planets spheres uh taking up most of the background but i decided to lower keep them in a bit i changed it a little bit but keep them more at like i guess you it's not really uh, the horizon <laughs> but keep them more in line with the building and i added a few other buildings in here which i'll talk about in a second keep them more in line with that and then have the the dark sky starry sky above and i also decided to throw in something that is reminiscent of <laughs> a reference to the silencer from the my universe music video it worked really well um considering uh the real world milo xyluto connections with this song and with the silencer obviously people of the pride we know now that people of the pride and major minus are very closely linked that they were really trying to take those parts that that came from the man who swears demo and put that into major minus obviously that turned into something different but now in the people the pride visuals if you look at the official video that they released it's a lot of similar imagery to the major minus character it from the the comics so <laughs> i thought well why don't i throw the silencer in there and the idea is like a um, protest kind of thing i guess some sort of like rebellion that's what it's always about right and so that's why i have the character with the megaphone like talking out to this crowd and the the buildings so really i just wanted them on some sort of pedestal above everyone to kind of show that like this person's trying to rally everyone together so that's why they're on a tower but i i also wanted to make sure that i didn't make it seem like they were kind of that that ruler the major minus type character which i think is definitely not <laughs> and i think i managed to um succeed with that but the one ta then i was like but well, what is the tower and i just decided it was kind of like a building thing and i <laughs> i don't know i threw in some other ones in the background which are supposed to be more like um very like electronic and uh inspired by especially the rightmost building inspired by internet modems <laughs> so that's the story of those 
buildings, yes. Uh, it's kind of industrial, you know? So I threw in all, uh, like, drew out all these elements, colored everything, and I added in some fog in the crowd to break it up a little bit more because, you know, everything's so, <laughs> like, crisp lines and wanted some more mystery in there. I added some of the fog too in front of those characters at the bottom of the building, which I think is maybe not as um, noticeable. It, it was feeling very flat. <laughs> Everything was feeling too flat, even though I had, you know, this illusion of depth. The illusion wasn't strong enough, so I started messing around with blur options. I took elements like the, all, all of the layers for the silencer and I converted them to smart objects so that I could use um, the smart effects for blur. The, the benefit of doing that is that I can then go back in and adjust the blur settings if I think it's too much. I can pull it back. Otherwise, I would have had, well, also so that I could keep all the layers separate because otherwise I would have had to flatten them to apply the blur effect. So I did that, converted them to smart objects, and I blurred out, well, I think I used maybe a box blur, Gaussian blur, for the silencer, and I blurred out some of the planets. Uh, I blurred out the planets too. And then I tried using the radial zoom blur for the crowd to give it more of a feel of like, I don't know, not really camera lens blur. <laughs> I just didn't want to blur it the same as the stuff in, in the background. So I use that zoom blur and kind of maybe feels more like um, movement. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously I wanted to keep the foreground character unblurred. <laughs> So I think that really helped to separate all these different layers, kind of layers of the drawing, the foreground to the midground, kind of have two levels of background. So yeah, I think the blur was a really, really good choice. Then I was still struggling, kind of like with the infinity sign drawing, but this time the exact opposite <laughs> corner, which was the top left. It felt very empty because the character is obviously very small, not taking up much of the screen because they're up higher, <laughs> far, further away from where we, the viewer, are. And the silencer was so prominent in the right side of the top and no planets or anything. And I thought, what can I add in this corner just to kind of fill it? It's a little bit more. So I started adding in, I thought about my first drawing of this project, Let Somebody Go, and how I have those like kind of foggy nebula areas in the corners. I am very cautious about being too repetitive in this whole series. So I guess I'm concerned that if I get started on this, I'm not gonna have any ideas for what else to put in the broader spaces and it's just gonna be like, oh, make it like a um, nebula <laughs> sky, oh yeah. So I tried doing something similar. Then I thought, well, this is kind of cloudy. Kind of seems like a cloud. I extended it over to the right side as well um, to kind of make it seem like it's filling the whole sky. I didn't want to go too overboard on that side because I didn't want to hide the silencer too much or have it like overpower the silencer. I think it turned out okay. And then I thought, well, I bet I have a rain brush. <laughs> so I, it took me quite a bit to get the rain to look uh, good, <laughs> but I, added that in there to have it coming down from the clouds so that there was a purpose for the clouds to be there. And overall, it, it actually, I, once I had that idea, I thought, yeah, that fits really well because I already threw the fog in for mystery um, in the crowd. <laughs> so why not have some rain coming down too? And I think that all in all really added to it. Plus, if you think about the fact that the song, People of the Pride, the sphere that's associated with it is Ultra, which is the lightning planet. <laughs> and so I feel having, there's no lightning in this drawing, um, just in higher power, but uh, having it be like a storm, stormy night, basically, I think that really added to the drawing overall. And thus concludes round three of this project. I feel like this one actually went smoother than the second round. At least I was able to get the drawings done quicker, I think. Well, 
Anyway, there's only one more round left, so I'm very close to the end of this project. The songs that are in the next round are Music of the Spheres 1, Human Hearts, and Coloratura. So I'm very excited to get on with those. Music of the Spheres 1 and Coloratura, I saved for last since they are bookending <laughs> the thing. And so I thought it'll be good to work through everything else. And I definitely wanted to work on them at the same time. So I thought, why not leave it for last? Because then I'll have, you know, worked through everything. I had all these concepts, but obviously each drawing has evolved, you know, once I redraw it for the larger size and then, you know, in the process of rendering and everything. A lot of the concepts still stuck from what I drew in the thumbnail sketches, but they're very different <laughs> in the final versions. So I thought saving Music of the Spheres 1 and Coloratura for last would be good because then I can use that as a way to start and end the journey. If you remember, that was kind of the idea that I wanted to bring to this, that we're going through a journey. And that's why I did things like using the same color palette throughout all of it and trying to reuse the same like human-ish character, <laughs> humanoid character uh, throughout. So that's that. So maybe I'll start with human heart, but we'll see. Um, those are the next drawings and then that's gonna be it. So the next video, uh, I'll probably just do the same as I've done, just recording the drawings and making the next video about that. Then I can do a video on the um, process of putting together the booklet. Look at me, making even more content from this. <laughs> it's taken me quite a few months, so maybe in another month you'll see the next video. <laughs> I do have some more free time, I think, uh, coming up. So maybe I can get these done. Maybe I can focus, focus my efforts on one project and get it done quickly. <laughs> Cause then I have a lot more art stuff that I want to do still too. But anyway, thank you for sticking around for this video of Music of the Spheres artwork booklet by me. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Peace out.